What's up guys, Andrew here on my channel Geared Inc where I get to share what I'm passionate about with you and on my channel that's PC Tech, Games and Gear. Today we have something very, very exciting, at least exciting for me and I hope exciting for you. A couple of days ago, a company out of Romania that is a hardware website, um, was uh, they got their hands on some samples a little while ago for the i7-8700K and the i7 or i5-8600K uh, for Coffee Lake. Now they say that in their article due to how they obtained these legally by the way, um, they weren't required to sign an NDA because it was directly from the manufacturer, so they benchmarked the hell out of them, and they posted the results. Now, typically, you know, with rumors and things like that, I don't put as much stock in it, but again, in one of my previous videos, a lot of rumors this last year have been proven to be true, and this all seems legitimate. So take it with a little grain of salt, but I'm excited because it appears that we're getting a sneak preview of what we're going to expect out of Coffee Lake. Now they did a bunch of tests, um, we're going to just kind of run through the gauntlet here. Uh, so we have the X370 board which the tests were performed on so you get an idea of kind of what the board's going to look like. Um, this is from Gigabyte obviously uh, with the Oris. If you've seen any of their boards, very similar uh, similar layout. And then the here are the test bed that they use to run all the different tests. Now something that is out of the gate that I have to mention is they were able to get the i5 8600K to 5.1 gigahertz at like 1.36 volts. That's really, really good. And the i7-8700K, now again, this could be a bin chip, it's directly from the manufacturer, who knows if we're gonna be able to overclock the side, but they were getting 5.3 gigahertz at 1.36, 1.35 volts. Pretty crazy. Now, that is something that we have to take into consideration when we're also considering these benchmarks, because as you go through them, you'll notice things like Blender, uh, just the instructions per clock, it's crazy on this six core, um, and a lot of these tests is either at parallel with the eight core equivalent from Ryzen, or sometimes even beating it out where instructions per clock matter more. Now in uh, applications where more cores matter, you still see that the 1700 and the 1700X are able to keep pace or beat it, so it's one of those give and takes, but for a CPU that has two less cores and four less threads, pretty impressive. Um, going down the line, you can see um, in 3D rendering and some other their tests, you get an idea of kind of the gambit that they've done. Now, what's encouraging if you're an AMD fan is that, again, if you're looking at this, this is with these CPUs heavily overclocked. So performance-wise, the 1700 and the 1700X overclocked might still be able to beat out these uh, CPUs and these tests um, you know, if they were running at stock speed, but that's something we're going to have to wait to see. Now, going on to some of the funner, in my opinion, benchmarks gaming now in 1080p intel obviously kb lake it currently beats amd due to the instructions per clock again games take advantage of that speed and it's no surprise coffee lake smashes it in a lot of the games where it is four core bottlenecked or where the uh, again the instructions per clock are being taken advantage of by the game however what's interesting in games where multiple cores are being taken advantage of the R7 is not that far behind. It's actually pretty close. That was fascinating to me because AMD's whole direction is they believe that in the future, more cores are gonna be required for games. They're encouraging it with the developers. And uh, whether again, Intel planned on coming out with a six core, or they were forced to, it's, it, it's nice because now we do get to see that uh, more cores are starting to matter a little bit more, which is exciting. But overall guys, these are some great um, results. So, and what it speaks to me is this, again, on the Intel side of things, they're making steps they haven't made. It's awesome um, that and if you are waiting or you're gonna build an Intel rig, you got this to look forward to, tons of performance, two extra cores, and in productivity, it's actually pretty crazy what it's able to do. But on the AMD side of things, it's a little interesting in that it still performs well. The R7 is still performing really well. Um, we don't really get to see um, a lot, well, we do get to see a lot of, the, I should say, the R uh, or the i5-8600K performance, but we don't really have I, our, uh, our uh, 5 performance in this benchmark to compare it to, so we don't know how those two are gonna line up. But at the higher end of the SKU, it's definitely something that we need to start considering. Now, um, you know, with these benchmarks, it's kind of pushed me into kind of a, a fun place because uh, you know, with competition, we're the ones who benefit. I'm not a fanboy. Let me state that. I've stated it before, but let me say it again. I don't care if it's AMD. I don't care if it's Intel. I don't care if it's NVIDIA. I don't care if it's not NVIDIA. What I care about is value. Either, and what that means to me is performance. 
Now, to other people, it's gonna mean cost. And so what's awesome about this place we're in is that if you're an AMD builder and you're more caring about the value you're gonna get, these results show um, that you can get an R7 and still have a great experience and you're not losing out very, you know, barely, if anything, on the Intel side of things. Now, if you're an Intel user, it's great because you have faster instructions per clock, better gaming performance, and now you have something, if you have that extra Intel tax that you can spend um, and stay within, you know, uh, within Intel if that's what you want to do. But there's really no wrong answer, guys. It just depends on what you're going to be using it for, but there's great options now across the board. It's a great place for a PC enthusiast, a gamer, or a productivity, you know, kind of person, creativity, whatever you do, it's a great place to be. I'm super stoked. If you like this video, guys, leave me a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave me a thumbs down. Get subscribed either way. I want to hear back from you. Leave me a comment. I always answer it. And for my subscribers, I can't but thank you enough. Um, I've only been doing this consistently for a couple of months. And in the last month alone, I've gained like 20 or 30 subscribers. That's super exciting to me. And I hope that I continue to grow. And I hope that you continue to join us here on Geared Inc.